Hello, everyone, and welcome to this bonus episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm your host, Jason Aiken. In this episode, I will be discussing a modern Cthulhu mythos round robin tale The Eldritch Force. It was recently published in the February 2014 issue of the Lovecraft E Zine. It is written by Pete Rollick, Glenn Owen Barris, Brian M. Sammons, Bruce L. Pretty, Robert M. Price, Rick Lay, and David Conyers. The Lovecraft Easing, published by Mike Davis, does a great job of releasing quality Lovecraftian fiction and they make it available in multiple formats. I'll include links in the show notes where you can read or listen to The Eldritch Force. You can read the story for free on the Lovecraft Easing website and also download the audiobook edition of the issue that contains the story. If you wish, you can purchase the issue in Kindle or print format. The Eldritch Force is a mashup of pulp-style heroes and the Cthulhu mythos, and also acts as a sequel to the original Cthulhu mythos Round Robin, The Challenge from Beyond. It's set in post-World War II occupied Berlin, and later beneath Auschwitz. Some great pulp elements are present underground tunnels, secret experiments, and monsters, just to name a few. Each author introduces their own pulp-style hero into the story during their portion. You can see two of the main characters, Ash and Hurst, the dead man detective, along with a ghoul, which is a werewolf-looking creature, in Dave Felton's artwork. Pete Rollick introduces Ash, or the Nightmare. He's a German who dwells beneath Berlin. Rather than skin and bone, his body seems to be made up of ash. He has the the ability to disintegrate his body to fit through tight spaces. He can also reform his body after suffering injury. He appears to have been around for a long time. Glenn Owen Barris introduces us to Hearst, the dead man detective. He's an American with MIS suffering from an inoperable brain tumor. He has the ability to communicate with any corpse he touches making him an ideal gatherer of information. Brian M. Sammons brings in Laszlo Schrieber, otherwise known as number 769804. He's a Hungarian Jew and former prisoner at Auschwitz, where his family was killed. Laszlo has constructed a suit of armor and backpack that allow him to fire lightning bolts. He learned of this technology while he was among the great race of Yith. For more information on them, see Lovecraft's The Shadow Out of Time. They are also mentioned in Lovecraft's portion of The Challenge from Beyond. The trauma of Auschwitz allowed Laszlo to break the mental wall the Yithians constructed in his head, and he now can remember what he learned while his mind was among them. He now seeks vengeance for his family. Bruce L. Pretty brings in perhaps the pulpiest character, Operator Number 13, an American OSS agent sent to clean up what is going on beneath Auschwitz. He proves tough to kill and has regenerative abilities that tie into another Mythos series. If the Eldritch Force was a role-playing game, 
Pretty's portion also introduces the mini-boss of the story, the Supreme Soviet, who is mentioned in name only at the end of his portion. Robert M. Price picks up on the Supreme Soviet and lets loose in bringing him to life. He's a powerhouse and a true force of destruction, a real physical threat for the heroes to confront. Pete Rollick returned for another portion after Robert M. Price's portion to throw in a reanimator reference and to set the stage for the final portions of the story. Rick Lay comes in and drops some more mythos references. He then introduces the big bad of the story, while at the same time tying the eldritch force directly to the challenge from beyond. David Conyers conducts an epic battle with the assembled characters and brings the story to a conclusion, but also leaves room for a sequel. I'm not sure if the Eldritch Force marks the first appearance of any of these characters or not, but it appears from comments made by Rollick and Pretty that at least their characters, Ash and Operator Number 13, will be seen again. I'll be sure to keep a look at, uh, an eye out for them. I thought this was a pretty cool story that got more and more mythos as it progressed. Mythos elements are shown throughout, but with Lay and Conyers really adding in the mythos references in the last two portions of the story. I think these modern day authors did a great job in carrying on the Cthulhu mythos round robin tradition that started with Lovecraft and the other Weird Tales writers in the challenge from beyond. Do yourself a favor and check out the Lovecraft easing links in the show notes and give The Eldritch Force a read or a listen. You'll be glad you did. That's it for this week's episode. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash pulpcast. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.